Members, please take, take your seats. Order, order, members. Order. On the last occasion, the Assembly met, it was unable to elect a speaker. In accordance with Standing Order 4.8, I have taken the chair as an acting speaker until the speaker is elected. Before we commence, I wish to advise you that since the Assembly's last sitting on 21st of October 2019, several members have resigned or ceased to be members of the Assembly under the Northern Ireland Assembly Disqualification Act. 1975. In accordance with the Northern Ireland Assembly Act, Mr. Colm Eastwood, Mr. S Stephen Farry, Ms. Claire Hanna, and Ms. Carla Lockhart ceased to be members of the Assembly on the 13th of December 2019, and I notified the Chief Electoral Officer in accordance with Section 35 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I have been informed by the Chief Electoral Officer that Sinead McLaughlin has been returned as a member for Foyle constituency. Andrew Muir has been returned as a member for North Down constituency. Matthew O'Toole has been returned as a member for South Belfast constituency. And Mrs Diane Dodds as a member for Upper Band constituency. Mr Andrew Muir gave the undertaking, signed the role of membership and entered his designation in the presence of the Speaker and Clerk on the 23rd of 2019 of December. Mrs. Diane Dodds gave the undertaking, signed the role of membership and entered her designation in the presence of the Speaker and Clerk 
on 9th of January 2020, Ms Sinead McLaughlin gave their undertaking, signed the rule of membership and entered the designation in the presence of the Speaker and Clerk on the 10th of January 2020. The members have now taken their seats. I also wish to advise members that I have received letters from Mr Martin O'Muller and Ms Megan Fearon advising of their resignations as members of the South Belfast and Newry and Armagh constituencies, respectively, with effect from close of business on Monday, the 6th of January 2020, I notified the Chief Electoral Officer in accordance with Section 35 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I was informed by the Chief Electoral Officer that Ms Deirdre Hargey has been returned as a member of the Assembly for South Belfast, and Ms Liz Kimmins returned as a member for Newry and Armagh. Ms. Um, Ms. Deirdre Hargy and Ms. Liz Kimmins signed the undertaking and rule of membership and entered their designations in the presence of the Speaker and the Clerk, Chief Executive, on 9th of January 2020. Mr. Andrew, Andrew Muir gave the undertaking, signed the rule of membership and entered his designation in the presence of the Speaker, Chief Executive, on 23rd of December. Ms. Diane Dodge gave the undertaking, signed the rule of membership and entered her designation in the presence of the Speaker and Clerk on the 9th of January. Ms. Sinead McLaughlin gave the undertaking, signed the rule of membership and entered his designation in the presence of the Speaker and the Clerk on the 10th of January. The members have now taken their seats. I have also received a letter of resignation from Maria Hendren advising her of her resignation as a member for East Belfast with effect from the 12th midnight on 8th of January. I notified the Chief Electoral Officer in accordance with Section 35 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I was informed by the Chief Electoral Officer that Mrs Naomi Long has been returned as a member of the Assembly for East Belfast and she signed the undertaking and rule of membership and entered her designation in the presence of the Speaker and the Chief Executive on the 9th of January 2020. On behalf of the Assembly, I welcome the new members and wish them every success. Before we can proceed, I want to make clear the procedural constraints on this setting. Section 39.1 of the Northern Ireland Act provides that each assembly shall, as its first business, elect from among its members a presiding officer and deputies. Therefore, the assembly cannot conduct any further business until the speaker and deputy speakers have been elected. Members should be clear, if a speaker and deputy speaker, speakers are not elected, no further business can proceed. So the first item of business is the election of the Speaker, and I will remain in the chair for this process. I wish to advise members that the election of the Speaker will be conducted under the procedure set out in Standing Order 4. I will begin by asking for nominations. Any member may rise to propose that another member is elected as Speaker. I will then ask for the proposal to be seconded by another member as required by Standing Order 14. Members who have been proposed will be asked if they are willing to accept the nomination. If they do not, that proposal will fall. I will then ask for further proposals and follow the same procedure for each. When it appears that there are no further proposals, I will make it clear that the time for proposals has passed. If members indicate that they wish to speak, a debate relevant to the election may then take place. Members will be allowed up to three minutes. At the conclusion of the debate or the conclusion of the nominations, if there are no requ requests to speak, I shall put the question that the member first proposed shall be Speaker of this Assembly. The vote will be on a cross-community basis. If the pro proposal is not carried, I shall put the question in relation to the next nominee and so on until all nominations are exhausted. Once a Speaker is elected, 
all other nominations will fall automatically. Do you, I have any proposals for the office of Speaker of the Assembly at this point? Can Corlea, can I nominate Alec Maskey for the position of Can Corlea of Speaker of this House? I'd like to propose Roy Beggs, MLA, for the Speaker of the Northern Ireland Assembly. Need a seconder. Need a seconder. I'll second up. I nominate Mr. Patrick McGill for the Office of Speaker. Nominated. Do they accept the proposals? Yes, I accept. I accept. Yeah. Accept it. Roy Beggs, do you accept the proposal? I would accept the proposal. Patsy McGloan, do you accept the proposal? I accept the proposal, Mr. Speaker. Is there any further proposals? Any other, any other proposals? No. Nope. The time now has passed for propo the proposals has expired. A number of members have indicated that they wish to speak. I would remind members that they may speak only once in the course of the de debate. Having consulted with the whips, I will allow members up to three minutes in which to speak and approximately 30 minutes for contributions. Members should note that while it is entirely a matter for them if they wish to take interventions on this occasion, I will not be giving extra time for members that do so. Um, I call on Peter Weir, first person. Thank you, Mr. Acting uh, Speaker, and may I first of all congratulate you uh, on the, the conduct of today's, uh, today's meeting. Um, and indeed, it's great to see you, I think, in your rightful place, uh, George. Can I say that I think today the eyes uh, of the world are on us, but I suppose particularly for the citizens of Northern Ireland, they look today for us to deliver for them. They look with hope, expectation, and probably some of them with a certain level of cynicism. So I think there is a major challenge for all of us. We begin today with this first item of business, the election of a speaker as the first step in a long journey, indeed one may say a never-ending journey, to try to make life better for all our citizens. In electing a new speaker, we should, I think, first of all, acknowledge and pay tribute to the outgoing speaker, uh, Robin Newton. When someone leaves post, a senior post such as this, this is perhaps the the nearest equivalent somebody will actually have to hear the eulogies uh, at their own funeral without having the inconvenience of having died in the meantime. Uh, but I have no hesitation in praising Robin Newton. I have known Robin and his family for more than 20 years. And above all, Robin is a family man. He is a man of quiet conviction. And unlike perhaps some outgoing speakers in other places, did not seek to make himself the centre of attention in a showy role, but tried to maintain discipline in a fair, uh, even-handed and indeed dignified manner. In doing so, I suppose every speaker at times will incur the wrath of one side or the other. They will have disagreed with different decisions, and at times I'm sure all of us have disagreed with something that the speaker has done, but I think that shows, highlights his impartiality uh, in doing so and we wish him well in the future. As I said, we do have a long journey ahead of us where it is a challenge to all 90 of us in this chamber to work together, whether uh, parties are in government or not in government, the betterment of the people of Northern Ireland should be the unifying factor. In doing so, the Speaker's role has been one which has um, often 
varied between the different traditions. There has been an outgoing DUP speaker, and so today uh, we will be, on behalf of the DUP, we will be uh, supporting uh, Alex Maskey as the, uh, as the new speaker. In doing so as well, we will be putting forward our own candidate uh, for deputy speaker, and we'll be supporting that person as the principal deputy speaker when the, the time comes. Uh, but I urge people to all to take this new opportunity uh, to work together to take this first step where people will want to see delivery which will better their lives. Thank you, Mr Acting. Deputy Speaker. Colin Michelle O'Neill. Gary, I've got a can call you to ask more or um Alec Maske and Molly Don can call you. It's my uh, real pleasure to be able to nominate my friend and colleague Alec Maske for the position of Speaker of the Assembly. Alec is someone whose professionalism, whose dedication, whose commitment and has always embodied his involvement in politics for many, many decades. Alec served as the first um, Sinn Féin councillor in Belfast City Council and later as the first Republican mayor in the history of Belfast in, and in both roles. I think he always showed and demonstrated a willingness to be able to represent all the citizens equally. A tireless and fearless advocate of those most in need in our community. And right across our society, Alex has always reached out and proved that he can be a voice for everyone. As a key figure in the negotiations leading up to the Good Friday Agreement and in all subsequent negotiations, Alec has always demonstrated his determination, his commitment to encouraging discussion and to encourage dialogue at all times. Serving as a committee chair, he's provided a platform for debate. He, got, he gets business done and he maintains his, uh, all the time making sure that he shows no fear or no favour to anyone and I'm quite sure that that's exactly what he will bring to this role. He will bring his enormous experience, his years of dedication to political life. He will bring all of that to the position of Speaker. And I also have no doubt that he will act at all times with determined professionalism and also with impartiality. I urge members to support Alex Maskey for the position of the Speaker of the Assembly for the Can Corlea. Thank you. Call on Nicola Mullen. Um, thank you very much. Um, three years we have waited to gather in this chamber I'm sure people will rightly be wondering why it has taken us uh, so long. The fundamental test of whether this will all work is if there is a genuine change in the mindset, the attitudes and the behaviour of all of us, all political parties. I think the election of Patsy McGlone would very much send that message that this is a new way uh, of operating and working with each other. Patsy McGlone, and it is my privilege to nominate him, is a man of great integrity and great fairness. I do not need to list the qualities of Patsy McGlone, the qualities that make him perfect for this role, because you all uh, know them. But this will be a very difficult time in this assembly, and the position of speaker is a very important role. So I would urge members to consider carefully that role, and I would urge them to vote to elect my party colleague, Patsy McGlone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Call Steve Aiken. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Speaker. And uh, may I echo some of the other comments that have been made here? It has been far too long since this assembly has been up and running. And whoever takes on the role of speaker has to be somebody who brings considerable degree of tact, diplomacy, knowledge, and experience to the role. And I cannot think within this assembly of anybody who would be better suited to that role than Roy Beggs. As being one of the most longest standing members of the Assembly back to 1998, and anybody who's known Roy, either in his work in his committees or as an MLA, or indeed some of the times he's sat in the chair you're sitting now, he has been of the utmost integrity. And what this Assembly needs going forward is somebody who's going to make sure that this Assembly is seen to be doing what the people of Northern Ireland wanted to do. And I will say very clearly that I fully recommend and support Roy Beggs, and I would like you all to do the same as well. Thank you. Call now and Naomi Long. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I first of all would like to add to what um, Peter Weir has said in respect of paying tribute to Robin Newton. Um, I have worked with Robin over many years, um, both in City Council and here in the Assembly, and he is also a constituency colleague, and so I want to thank him um, for what was, I have to say, a historic, if not necessarily in the way he would have wished, um, uh, time as the presiding officer um, of this House. 
um, and I want to thank him um, for his patience at times um, and uh, for, for his judgment um, when it was required. I think all of us meet here today uh, with the same ambition that this assembly will function uh, well for all the people of Northern Ireland, but for that to be a reality, it will not depend on words on paper produced by two governments. It will depend on changed attitudes and approaches um, from those of us who are called to show leadership. My expectation was that the post of speaker, and our belief as a party is that the post of speaker is one that should rotate amongst all of the parties. And therefore, we will be supporting Patsy McGlone for the post um, of speaker on this occasion. We believe that it is appropriate that those smaller parties within this chamber um, are given the opportunity um, to be able to show leadership um, in key roles in this House and that there is fairness and equity in how those are distributed across the parties. I want to put on record that that is no reflection either on the calibre or the ability of the other candidates whose names have been proposed on the floor of this <coughs> chamber. And I have no doubt that in whatever role they find themselves at the end of this process, we will be able to work with them constructively and for the best interests of the people of Northern Ireland. Thank you. Could we call Jim Oster? Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. New decade, new approach is the supposed catchphrase of the day. And yet here we are on the very first item of business. And it's new decade, old approach, old carve up between the DUP and Sinn Féin. If that's how things are going to continue, and I suspect it is, then nothing has changed. Nothing is new and nothing good will come of it. And the spectacle of seeing the DUP obediently troop through the lobbies to support the Sinn Féin speaker will not be lost on many. Of the three candidates, uh, I would much prefer uh, either of the other two. Uh, both of those other two uh, have been deputy speakers in this House. Uh, both have acquitted themselves in that regard. Uh, both have the personality and the capacity to do the job, and neither of them has baggage which uh, should pre prevent them from doing the job, and neither of them has baggage which would proclaim loud and clear that this is not a new approach, but the same old, same old. Right, the, the question is that uh, Alec Maskey be Speaker of this Assembly. All those say aye. Aye. Any aye. no's? No. no. Aye. 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 Clear the lobbies. The question will be put in three minutes.
Order, order, members will re resume their seats. Members re resume their seats. Order. 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 <laughs> the question is that Alec Maskey be Speaker of this Assembly. All those say aye. Aye. Contrary, if no. Do we have tellers? The tellers for the eyes, Cathal Boylan and Raymond McCartney, and the tellers for the nose, Alan Chambers and uh, Robbie Butler. And clear the lobbies, the assembly will, will divide. Eyes to the right, nose to the left.
secure the doors. Order members, and uh, the clerk will now read, read the result. 83 members voted, of which 51 voted aye, 61.4%. 39 nationalists voted, of which 27 voted aye, 69.2%. 37 unionists voted, of which 24 voted aye, 64.9%. Seven others voted, of which zero voted aye, 0%. Two members who voted in both lobbies are not included in these results. The motion is carried by cross-community support. I formally declare that uh, Alec Maskey has been elected as the chair of uh, this assembly and I invite him to take his seat.
Okay, members. Um, first of all, can I say uh, a big hearty thank you to all of those who uh, gave me their support this, this morning. And uh, I think it's a very, very important statement that it came from such a significant cross-community basis. It is indeed an honour to be elected as the Speaker of this new Assembly. And as the Assembly meets today, we do so with the sole intention of delivering for all of the people of the North and in this jurisdiction. It is my hope that this work is done in a spirit of generosity, cooperation and delivering good government uh, based on fundamentally on, on integrity and respect. We do enter a new Assembly today on the basis of a deal that can create credible and sustainable politics here in the North and where basic rights are guaranteed and public services delivered to, for all. My people are hopeful, in my view, and I think it has been widely said over the last number of days, people are hopeful that this new Assembly can deliver for them. It is all of our responsibility to make these ambitions a reality. And today that hope converges with opportunity. So it is time to renew and rekindle a political environment of reconciliation and respect and deliver on the promise of a new approach to politics in this decade. Goramila Mila Magos. Okay, so, members, in accordance with Section 39 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998, we will now commence the election of Deputy Speakers. The procedure for electing Deputy Speakers will be the same as that for the election of the Speaker. I will ask for proposals which must be seconded. I will then confirm that the member accepts a nomination and will continue in this way until there are no further proposals. I remind members that a debate may take place after I announce that the time for proposals has passed and the members will have three minutes to make their contribution. Do you have any proposals for the Office of Deputy Speaker of this Assembly? Uh, Mr Speaker, it is my great uh, pleasure to put forward the name of Christopher Stalford, MLA. Seconder for that proposal. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I uh, second Mrs. Foster's nomination. Uh, the, the member nominated Christopher Stalford, do you accept the nomination? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I accept the nomination. Thank you. Is there any proposal? To uh, propose Mr. Roy Beggs, MLA. Do we have a seconder for Mr. Roy Beggs? I would like to second that proposal, Mr. Speaker. Does Mr. Beggs accept the nomination? Yes, I'm willing to accept the nomination. Proposal? Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. I nominate Mr. Patsy McGlone for the Office of Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that nomination? I would like to second that proposal. Does Mr. McLoone accept the nomination? Kuramagi de Kian Korli, I guess Glacom, Lashen Walwishan, I guess Moikas, Limakara, Nicola Malin, Ashina Yano. Thanks very much indeed, Mr. Speaker. I accept the nomination and I thank Nicola Malin for the proposal. Okay. Any further proposals? There are no further proposals. Okay. If there are no further proposals, then the time for further proposals has, has expired. So we move on. Okay. So uh, a number of members have indicated that they wish to speak. I would remind members that they may speak only once in the course of the debate. And having consulted with the whips, members have up to three minutes in which to speak, and I'll allow around a half an hour for contributions. I call first of all Mr. Peter Weir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, one of the virtues and vices of being uh, involved in politics for a long period of time and indeed of, of growing older is that many of the people involved you actually know for a long period of time. I mentioned earlier of knowing uh, the outgoing speaker Robin Newton for two decades. I've also known I think probably Christopher Stalford uh, for more than 20 years. Uh, indeed I've known him so long you could say that I've, uh, I've known Christopher Stalford before he was young. Uh, <laughs> and down the years I think that he has actually 
uh, mellowed and indeed is more informal. Uh, had he been... It is undoubtedly the case that had this meeting been held several years ago, he'd be wearing two waistcoats rather than, <laughs> rather than one. Uh, for, uh, for my sin, uh, I was Christopher's first employer. Uh, so any subsequent blame uh, will lay very much at, at my door. Uh, but Christopher is somebody who is, has an intense interest in politics to his fingertips, who has a great knowledge and great skills. Like the outgoing speaker, he is also uh, a family man down the years we've seen uh, an expanding family. And he is someone who brings a wealth of experience potentially to this post. Uh, prior to being a member of this assembly, he served as a councillor in Belfast City Council for a number of years. And during that period, uh, both had a representative role as High Sheriff and also as Deputy Lord Mayor of Belfast. And so both the, the duties that will fall on any Deputy Speaker in terms of uh, hosting events, being able to provide that, and also giving good order in the Chamber uh, is one that Christopher is well, uh, is well blessed in. We have seen the contribution that he has made uh, to this Chamber. Mm -hmm. And for all of us on these benches, um, the quick wit, the uh, snappy comments, the interventions, the great speeches uh, will be greatly missed by on these benches whenever he's in the deputy chair. Uh, and, but I believe that he is someone uh, who serves in South Belfast, probably the most diverse constituency in Northern Ireland. He is someone who brings a wealth of experience to the role, and I have no hesitation in supporting Christopher Stalford for deputy speaker and subsequently, I think, for, uh, for Principal Deputy Speaker. Are there speakers indicating to speak, members? So we will move on to the, the vote. So I will now put the question. The question is that uh, Christopher Stalford be uh, elected as Speaker or Deputy Speaker of the Assembly. Deputy Speaker, Christopher. Okay. Aye. All those in favour? Aye. All those in contrary? No. Okay. So I formally declare then that Christopher, well, there are eyes from all sides of the Assembly and there are no dissenting voices. I am satisfied that cross community support has been demonstrated. And I formally declare that Christopher Stalford has been elected as Deputy Speaker. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Right. Mr. Roy Beggs uh, is uh, Deputy Speaker of the Assembly. All those in favour? Aye. The contrary? Okay, so as there are eyes from all sides of the Assembly and there are no dissenting voices, I am satisfied that cross community support has been demonstrated. I formally declare that Mr. Roy Beggs has been elected as Deputy Speaker. Move on then. That uh, the question is that Patsy McLone be deputy speaker of this assembly. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, say no. I think the ayes have that. Are there ayes from all sides of the assembly, and there are no dissenting voices? I am satisfied that cross community support has been demonstrated. I formally declare that Mr. Patsy McLone has been elected as deputy speaker. As three deputy speakers have been elected, that concludes this item of the business. I offer my congratulations to the successful candidates and look forward to working uh, in partnership with all of the deputy speakers. On the order paper is a motion to appoint the Business Committee. As with similar motions, this will be treated as a business motion, so there will be no debate. Clerk, please read the motion. That the following shall be appointed to be members of the Business Committee. The Speaker, ex officio, Ms Kelly Armstrong, Ms Claire Bailey, Mr Robbie Butler, Mrs Dolores Kelly, Mr Gordon Lyons, Mr Declan McAleer, Mr Colin McGrath, Mr Andrew Muir, Ms. Carol McKillen, Mr. George Robinson, and Mr. John Stewart. Okay, so uh, I beg to move. The 
Motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have that. The, the next item of business is the appointment of the First Minister and Deputy First Minister. I will conduct the process of filling the offices in accordance with the procedure set out in Section 16 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998 and Standing Order 44.1. I will begin by asking the nominating officer of the largest political party to nominate a member of the Assembly to be the First Minister. I will then ask the nominating officer of the largest political party of the largest political designation to nominate a member of the Assembly to be Deputy First Minister. As the persons nominated to fill the vacancy shall not take up office until each of them has affirmed the terms of the Pledge of Office contained in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998, when I have received both nominations, I will ask each of the persons nominated to accept the nomination and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office. And before we proceed, Member Members may find it helpful if the Pledge of Office is read into the record, and I will ask the Clerk to read the Pledge of Office. The Pledge of Office is as follows. To pledge to discharge in good faith all the duties of office, commitment to non-violence and exclusively peaceful and democratic means, to serve all the people of Northern Ireland equally, and to act in accordance with the general obligations on government to promote equality and prevent discrimination, to promote the interests of the whole community represented in the Northern Ireland Assembly towards the goal of a shared future, to participate fully in the Executive Committee, the North-South Ministerial Council and the British-Irish Council, to observe the joint nature of the offices of First Minister and Deputy First Minister, to uphold the rule of law based as it is on the fundamental principles of fairness, impartiality and democratic accountability including support for policing and the courts as set out in paragraph 6 of the St Andrews Agreement, to support the rule of law unequivocally in word and deed, and to support all efforts to uphold it, to work collectively with the other members of the Executive Committee to achieve a society free of paramilitarism, to challenge all paramilitary activity and associated criminality, to call for and to work together with the other members of the Executive Committee to achieve the disbandment of all paramilitary organisations and their structures, to challenge paramilitary attempts to control communities, to support those who are determined to make the transition away from paramilitarism, to accept no authority, direction or control on my political activities other than my democratic mandate alongside my own personal and party judgment, to participate with colleagues in the preparation of a programme for government, to operate within the framework of that programme when agreed within the Executive Committee and endorsed by the Assembly, to support and act in accordance with all decisions of the Executive Committee and Assembly, to comply with the Ministerial Code of Conduct. Paragraph 6 of the St Andrews Agreement says, We believe that the essential elements of support for law and order, including endorsing fully the Police Service of Northern Ireland and the criminal justice system, actively encouraging everyone in the community to cooperate fully with the PSNI in tackling crime in all areas, and actively supporting all the policing and criminal justice institutions, including the policing board. Okay, thank you. Member, the pledge of office has now been read into the record of proceedings, and I will proceed with the nomination process. I have received notification from the nominating officer of the DUP advising me that Mr Gordon Lyons will serve as nominating officer for the party for this item of business. I call Gordon Lyons to nominate a member of the Assembly to be the First Minister and allow him up to three minutes to say a few words in support of the nomination. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. Um, it is a uh, delight for me to be able to stand here today and on behalf of the Democratic Unionist Party uh, to nominate uh, Mrs Arlene Foster, MLA, for the position of First Minister of Northern Ireland. We have come uh, a long way uh, in the last number of years, and uh, I know, having spoken to many people right across Northern Ireland, uh, that people want us to get on with the job here. They want us to, to work uh, and to deliver uh, on the issues that matter uh, to them. Uh, we all know what they are. We all know the very difficult job 
uh, that we have in front of us. But that job starts today. It starts with the nomination of First Minister and Deputy First Minister and other uh, executive ministers uh, so that we can form that executive so that this assembly can sit uh, and do the job that we were elected to do. I absolutely agree with those outside who say that we should have been here um, before now. Uh, we all would have liked to have uh, been here doing our jobs um, sooner uh, than we uh, have been able to uh, today. But nevertheless, we are here. Um, it is the time now uh, to get on with this work. Uh, and again, uh, I say once more, on behalf um, of uh, my party, uh, we are delighted to be able to nominate Arlene Foster to the position of First Minister of Northern Ireland. Thank you. Remember. So, Mrs Arlene Foster, are you willing to take up the office of First Minister and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. I confirm that I am willing uh, to take up the office of First Minister and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I have received a letter from the nominating officer of Sinn Féin advising me that Conor Murphy will serve as our nominating officer for this item of business. And I call Mr Murphy to nominate a member of the Assembly to be the Deputy First Minister. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to nominate Michelle O'Neill uh, for the position of Deputy First Minister. Uh, she follows on in that post uh, from our late great friend Martin McGuinness, who served with such distinction as Deputy First Minister in this Assembly for many years. Uh, and I know that Michelle will bring the same commitment to genuine power sharing, mm -hmm. to equality for all of our citizens, uh, and to reaching out across the divide and ensuring that we try and make this uh, institution and the institutions of the Good Friday Agreement function as the, uh, the purpose was set out for the Good Friday Agreement on the basis of equality and respect uh, and parity of esteem for all those who serve here and all those we represent right across the community. So I'm very confident uh, that Michelle, alongside the First Minister, will fulfil that role. Uh, and we look forward uh, to the Assembly uh, beginning a new journey, one which is about genuine power sharing and one which is about delivery uh, for the services uh, for the people that we represent. Uh, I'm pleased to nominate Michelle O'Neill. Thank you. So, uh, Ms Michelle O'Neill, are you willing to take up the office of Deputy First Minister and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Gormi agat kan korlia jivim go well me touch not glacky lash and roll show. I confirm that I am willing to take up the office of deputy first minister, and I affirm the pledge, the terms of the pledge of office set out in the 1998 act. Thank you very much. Uh, there will now be an opportunity for speeches, and I will begin by calling the first minister and then the deputy first minister to address the assembly. I now call the first minister, Arlene Foster. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And may I first of all congratulate you as you are elected to serve as Speaker of this House. Uh, it is a role with uh, much responsibility to ensure that members on all benches are heard and I look forward to working with you and indeed the broader Speaker team which has just been elected. Uh, Mr Speaker, to serve as the First Minister of Northern Ireland is deeply humbling and brings with it enormous responsibility to the people that we represent. This is the fourth anniversary of when I first took up this role. A lot of water has passed onto the bridge since then, but today uh, the real work starts. This last three years have focused too much on division and recrimination, and there's plenty of blame to go around, but the time has come to move forward with resolution. The lessons have been learned, and it's time to get Northern Ireland moving forward again. However, the restoration of this Assembly and Executive alone will not solve our waiting lists or reduce the staff pressures in our hospitals. Indeed, simply filling posts will not resolve the mental health challenges our society is facing at the moment. There needs to be action and decisions need to be made. The Bengoa report needs to be implemented. It already has cross-party agreement. It has a 10-year plan. But that was in 2016, and we have lost three years. And to deliver this transformation, it will not be easy. It will require courageous decisions by members on all sides of this House. Mr Speaker, I pledge to work in a collegiate manner with all the parties across this chamber 
to ensure that our public services are improved, that every citizen feels valued and that we lay a solid foundation for the next generation. In 2021, Northern Ireland will celebrate its centenary and we want to do so with safer streets, better schools and a first-class health service free at the point of need. The National Health Service is unique to the United Kingdom and we must work together to protect it and strengthen it. Within this chamber, Mr Speaker, there are people who are British, Irish, Northern Irish and European. There are many identities and uh, those of us who are here today should have each of our identities respected. That is why we reached the fair and balanced deal which caters for British and Irish as well as new and emerging identities. We want everyone to feel at home in Northern Ireland. In particular, I draw attention to the commitments to fully implement the Armed Forces Covenant and establish a Veterans Commissioner. These are very significant for young men and women from these shores who have or continue to defend democracy all over the world. Mr Speaker, you along with other members in this chamber are an Irish Republican and I am a Unionist with a strong British identity. But regardless of our differences, we must seek out common ground. When I visited Our Lady's Grammar School in Newry, the pupils gave me a lovely picture as a gift. It has hung in my office upstairs ever since, just above my shoulder, and in Irish it states, together we are strong. We have many differences, and Michelle's narrative of the past 40 years could not be any more different to mine. And I'm not sure we will ever agree on much about the past. But we can agree that there was too much suffering and that we cannot allow society to drift back and allow division to grow. Northern Ireland is succeeding in many ways. It's time for Stormont to move forward and show that together we are stronger for the benefit of everyone. Fixing problems in schools and reforming our health service so people receive timely treatment should be a priority for all of the parties. So, Mr Speaker, let us get down to work and, most importantly, let us get Northern Ireland moving again. Thank you. And can I also say just on your new um, position and I look forward to your leadership in this Assembly. This is a defining moment for our politics here. Um, from today, the parties represented in this chamber undertake to cooperate in every way that we can in order to rebuild public trust and confidence in an engagement with this Assembly and its executive. Our mission must be to deliver good politics. Our mission must be to deliver on health, on education and jobs for everyone right across um, our communities. I see no contradiction whatsoever in declaring our firm commitment to power sharing with unionism in the Stormont Assembly, whilst also initiating a mature and inclusive debate about new political arrangements which examine Ireland's future beyond Brexit. Similarly, I see no contradiction in unionism working the existing constitutional arrangements whilst rightly taking its place in the conversation about what a new Ireland would look like. We can do this while maintaining our independent, distinct political identities and working in the best interests of all of the people. That is my firm commitment. After three years without functioning institutions, the five parties are here to form a new executive. It is my hope that we do so united in our determination to deliver a stable power sharing coalition that works on the basis of openness and transparency, that works on the basis of accountability, that works on the basis of good faith and with no surprises. I am really honoured to follow in the footsteps of my dear friend and comrade Martin McGuinness. Taken up the position of Deputy First Minister as Joint Head of Government, I too pledge to follow the example which he set by actively promoting reconciliation and building bridges that we all can cross to end sectarianism and bigotry. Resistance to equality caused the executive to fall. A refusal to embrace citizens' identity and rights left people frustrated, left people angry and left people divided. This cannot be repeated. Today, each of us are called to lead, to build common cause for a society that makes room for and gives respect to every single citizen, to deliver a power-sharing government 
that is truly grounded in fairness and in inclusion. And that has the courage to lead from the front in these times of change. Our politics must embrace civic society, trade unions, the voluntary and community sector, businesses, academia, farmers, church leaders, students, all must have a permanent place and a space to advise, input and hold this assembly and executive to account. We must work together to solve the problems that are facing this society. We will apply the full powers and resources available to us to address the major issues of the day, facing all those that we represent. I welcome the historic official recognition of the Irish language in this state. The guarantees for the language in law represents meaningful party of esteem for the community with which, from which I proudly come. Also, that the equality, mutual respect and all Ireland approaches enshrined in the Good Friday Agreement are being embraced and that we deliver on the promises of 1998 to a new generation of young people. Today, we have a basis in which to form, to move forward in building a fairer society and to build good government. We will institute necessary reforms across the board in order to get things done, but also to get things right. In this new administration, we must have shared values and policy objectives set out in a new programme for government. <coughs> Yesterday, our nurses and healthcare workers had to take industrial action. Let's make that the last day they have to do that. This executive will move immediately to settle the ongoing healthcare workers' pay a party dispute. Our health service is in crisis and demands our urgent attention. Waiting lists are unacceptable. The health service needs reformed, so we have a big, big job of work to do. As we face in to the great uncertainties of Brexit, it is an imperative that we redouble our efforts to develop and rebuild a modern, competitive and sustainable economy where we open doors to trade, investment, jobs and tourism. We need decent jobs that value workers and protect their rights. We need to improve our competitiveness through investing in our public structures, our public services and infrastructure. <clears throat> to conclude, as we approach the centenary of partition, let's not refight the battles of the past. It's time to bring people together. We can open doors, we can let the future in, we can give people hope and we can give our young people opportunity. It's my sincere hope that 2020 is a time of real change, which reinvents the optimism and the hope that we have experienced before, but our young people have not. It is time now for parties to have courage as we all choose hope over fear and we enter a new era of politics in this society. I want to wish all members the very, very best, particularly all the new MLAs. And I want to welcome and congratulate all those ministers that will be appointed into government today. We have two years left of this mandate. Let's go out and make a difference. Gormila Mayogov. Uh, there will now be an opportunity for a representative from each of the parties to speak. Members should limit their remarks to not more than three minutes. I have the names of some members who have already indicated that they wish to speak, but I asked uh, members, all members, in fact, who would like to contribute on behalf of their party to approach the desk and add their name to the speaking list. We would add it is not compulsory to do so. Um, the first member I would like to call will be Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I say that today is a good day for Northern Ireland. It is a good day for Northern Ireland because after three years of political vacuum, there will be a first and deputy first minister heading up a cross-party executive, taking decisions and working to the benefit of every one of the people that we all represent. I am delighted to have this opportunity to pay tribute and to congratulate my party leader, Arlene Foster, who returns as our First Minister today. She, like all of us, wants to get Northern Ireland moving forward again. That, as we all know, will be a task which requires hard work and dedication. Those are qualities which I know Arlene does not lack. Mr Speaker, much has changed in the time since this Assembly last met. The challenges facing our health service are most evident, and a requirement more than ever is needed for stable government. As we look ahead, there is a need for leadership. And within the Democratic Unionist Party, 
Arlene is someone who leads from the front and is not afraid to do so. Again, I know that she is ready, willing and able to take her place in the executive and assembly alongside the Deputy First Minister. I want to congratulate the Deputy First Minister and I know that she too recognises the challenges we are facing here in Northern Ireland. I worked with her previously when I chaired the committee and we had a good working relationship and I wish her well. May I also take this opportunity to congratulate you, Mr Speaker, and all of those from all of the parties around this chamber who will take their seat at the executive table today. As I said before, this is a good day for Northern Ireland, but it's a day which represents the beginning of much hard work. Success will be measured by delivery for all of the people of Northern Ireland, and as First Minister, and as my party leader, Arlene will have the full support of everyone on these benches as we seek to get Northern Ireland moving forward again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Could I call on Nicola Mullen, please? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and in addition to paying tribute to the outgoing speaker, we also wish you the best in your new post. As I'd said previously, we have waited three years and people will rightly be wondering why it has taken so long. Our view is that the, the deal could have been much better and that it does contain a number of missed opportunities. But for us, there are two key tests. The first is how our executive and assembly operates. And the second is what it actually does to transform our citizens' lives. We have all committed to a greater openness and transparency in the executive. We have all committed to seeing the end of the abuse of power and the reign of spads. And we have all committed to opening up this place and our government to better involve our citizens. And that is why we pushed very hard for the Citizens' Assembly. But there are also a number of commitments around policies that we have all committed to. We are all committed to tackling the crises in our health and education system and delivering pay justice. We pushed very hard with other parties to secure welfare mitigation so that we can protect our low-income families and our disabled citizens. We pushed as well for an anti-poverty strategy, a meaningful anti-poverty strategy, and a commitment to build new uh, and more social and affordable homes. We have also committed to tackling regional imbalance in terms of investment in our economy and we have committed to the expansion of McGee and we have committed to climate action among many, many things. They are big commitments and we have been pushing both governments because we need to see financial support, clear financial support. But all of us must honour those commitments. We will begin into the executive and we will be in this chamber because we genuinely want to see power sharing. We genuinely and sincerely want to work with all parties so that we can improve the lives of everybody living in Northern Ireland. We have entered in good faith and we are taking at face value that everyone else is acting in the same spirit. So we will play our part and I look forward as party working with the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister, uh, with ministers in the executive and with all uh, of our MLAs here across all political parties. We will always be reviewing and monitoring uh, our position and how we operate. The people of Northern Ireland deserve it. And we will always be honest right throughout this mandate with the people of Northern Ireland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call on Steve Egan. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Speaker. And it would be churlish of me not to welcome uh, the appointments of the new uh, First Minister and Deputy <coughs> First Minister going forward. For us, the key to this is being able to transform Northern Ireland and to make it work again. And I say to all the new MLAs who are in the room here today, we have a real task ahead of us because of anything we have seen over the last couple of years is that Northern Ireland desperately needs open, transparent, accountable and responsible government <laughs> that is actually open to everybody in Northern Ireland to see how we're going to make changes. And I look at the gallery and I see members of the civil service and I see other members there as well. There is a considerable amount of work that needs to be done in reform. 
The Northern Ireland political machine and government machine is broken. It needs to be fixed. The fact that we will be in receipt of considerable, though we don't know how much yet, largesse from our government to sort out some of the problems we have gives a burden to us to make sure we appropriately manage those resources. We actually deliver for the people of Northern Ireland and be in no doubt whatsoever over the next two years or however long this assembly is going to run, we must be able to make our government work. So the Ulster Unionist Party is pledged to work closely with our other partners in government. But what we want to see is a genuine transformation. We must change the culture of government in Northern Ireland. If we do not, Mr. Speaker, and First Minister and Deputy First Minister, we are doomed to fail. We cannot allow that to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Regan. Um, <coughs> could I now call on Naomi Long? Mr Speaker, um, can I first of all congratulate you and your team um, of Deputy Speakers on your appointment today. There is significant pressure facing the Assembly um, and all of us in terms of the business of this House, given um, the backlog of work that now needs to be undertaken um, in swift time. And we will work with you um, constructively in order to ensure that that can be done in as expeditious um, a, a manner as possible. A lot of water, um, much of it turbulent, has passed under the bridge in the last three years. However, I don't believe that today is a day for recriminations. I believe that it is a day for, for, for focusing forward and for looking forward to the opportunities and the challenges that lie ahead. Our commitment throughout the last three years has been to deliver the restoration and the reform um, of these institutions to deliver fit for purpose, accountable and sustainable government which can deliver for all the people of Northern Ireland. The deal which the governments have put forward is imperfect. I think all of us recognise that it is a compromise on the positions which each of the parties has taken in the negotiations. But we cannot ask others to do what we are not willing to do ourselves. And on balance, I believe that it is an honourable compromise and that if implemented with goodwill, and if implemented in a spirit of cooperation and inclusion, can form the basis on which we can deliver improved government for the people here in Northern Ireland. I want to congratulate the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister um, in their appointment to their roles. Much of the heavy lifting will, be, will have to be done by the two main parties, as is always the case. But I want to reassure both of you, um, through the Speaker, that we will not be found wanting in playing our role in terms of supporting you in the job that you have to do, in terms of encouraging you and being an effective support, um, where you are acting in the best interests of all the people of Northern Ireland, and on occasion of being a robust challenge where we fear that that is not the case. But we hope that we will do that too in a spirit of constructive engagement and one where we work together to deliver. There is optimism outside this place. It would be perhaps overstating our position as one that is optimistic. We are realistic about the prospects of this agreement. There is a lot of work to be done, but we are also determined that it will succeed and we will play whatever role we can in ensuring that it does. And you have my best wishes for the remainder of this term and for the future of this assembly. Thank you. Ms. Newby Long, can I now call on Claire Bailey, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to also congratulate yourself and your team on your new roles, um, and also uh, to our First Minister and Deputy First Minister on their reappointments, because this is a positive development for Northern Ireland today, um, and one on which we can hopefully begin to move forward. Because after three years of stagnation, I think that we can all agree that people have suffered enough. And while there is much contained within the draft agreement, there, are so much, there is so much there that has been promised before, but failed to be delivered. And if we are seriously intent in this chamber to do things differently, then it is delivery that we need to do. Let delivery, let delivery be the new approach for this new decade. 
and climate breakdown is the biggest threat that we face, yet we have done so little to address this. People are so far ahead of our politics and our policy, and they are demanding that we step up. So the Green Party are very encouraged to note the very high level of environmental commitments given within the draft deal. Promises such as a strategy to reduce our carbon emissions in light of the Paris Accord, an energy strategy to transition to a carbon neutral society, an independent environmental protection agency long overdue and long campaigned for, to eliminate plastic pollution, an economic strategy that will include a Green New Deal, the close down of the RHI, all very welcome. But we are the only place across these islands to yet see and endorse a climate act. Let this new decade and this new approach be one where Northern Ireland is no longer left behind as a place apart. Because regardless of anyone's identity, Mr. Speaker, a new Ireland is coming. It is here and it's called the climate emergency and it knows no borders. So we will all be affected. We truly believe that today a platform now exists to create a sustainable, accountable, devolved executive, assembly and society. The Green Party really hope that the will is there for that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Claire Bailey. Can I call on Jim Allister? <coughs> Mr Speaker, I get it that people are desperate to have their health service fixed. But I will not join in the pretense that an executive here, which can only exist by the grace and favour of a party that doesn't want Northern Ireland to exist, will bring them the stability that they crave. I also remind the public that the present health crisis was made in Stormont. It was the executive which broke with pay parity for nurses. It was the executive that, through successive ministers, radically reduced the number of beds in our hospitals. And of course, we're only here today because of a double blackmail. Blackmail of a Secretary of State who says, I have the money to fix the health service, but I won't give it unless there's an executive. A Secretary of State who shamelessly put the life of an executive above the life of the sick. And of course, the blackmail of Sinn Féin that you can only have a government if you pay the ransom that they demanded. Indeed, it's a commentary in itself on the perversity of these governmental arrangements that though it was Sinn Féin that tore down the institutions for what they were worth, it was the DUP that had to pay the price to get them back. And what a price it was to eat a mountain of their own words laced with yogurt and curry, a special brand of Campbell's soup. What a digestive system the DUP has. I remember 2017, the call of the First Minister was, not in my watch in respect of Irish language legislation. And yet here today, she is the handmaiden of that very legislation. Here today, she is the sponsor of an Irish language enforcer who will put Irish upon every public authority including this house, where we will have the ludicrous spectacle of needless interpretation. And on every council chamber, we will put our ratepayers to the needless cost of translation. Now, there may well be a honeymoon period for this executive, at least until 
the Irish language registration is safely on the statute book, at least until the innocent victims have been betrayed, been betrayed by the passing of the unbalanced Stormont House Agreement uh, on the legacy proposals. But at the end of it, this is only a staging post for Sinn Féin. The First Minister knows that. She knows that from her infamous reptilian turn of phrase when she knew what she would be doing if she gave in to the Irish language demand. But power, any power, is the supreme draw. And even now, we're not even going to have the an opposition. To wind up his well, I'll do my best to give you as much opposition as I can. OK, now, the honeymoon might not last that long, so thank you very much for your remarks, Mr Alistair. So, can I now call on Jerry Carroll? Um, and I believe it is plainly obvious that this Assembly will have some major uh, issues to deal with and to urgently deal with in the days and weeks uh, ahead. We live in a society where increasing numbers of people are utilising food banks, largely because of the welfare reform policies implemented by previous administrations in this chamber. And we have a, a crisis in our health system as waiting lists grow. We have a deep and profound crisis in our education system as school budgets are stretched to the limits. It is by these measures, Mr Speaker, that we will judge the conduct of this new executive and indeed anyone who holds office in it. And the recent deal, Mr Speaker, that was agreed by the five main parties is not a deal that people before profit were part of constructing. It's not our deal, it's your deal. We were not part of the talks, we were excluded from them despite our call for them to be open and for all party talks. We were not permitted to contribute to the content in this deal, which we think was the wrong decision, and one which disenfranchised the voice of smaller parties and those who voted for us. For that reason, uh, people before profit, our job, Mr Speaker, as we see it, is obviously to collaborate and work with people where we can and when there are issues in this deal, uh, of a positive nature in order that they are carried out. But it's also our role, Mr Speaker, to highlight where we see flaws in this deal, and not only because they may have bad consequences, but also because they may act not as a solution to the underlying tensions in this Assembly, but as a bridge to the next crisis, whenever that may be. I want to pay tribute, uh, Mr Speaker, to the nurses, to the health workers, to the trade unions, who so evidently transformed the political debate here, who put on the agenda in the most direct way the question of pay party and safe staffing levels, who confronted everyone in this room with the real crisis in the health service and refused to back down. These workers are the primary drivers of any progress that we may see, and it's worth remembering that any change we might see with regards to pay parity or investment in the health service was not something that was gifted to us by the British or Irish governments or even the five parties here. It is something that came from the action and struggle of those workers and unions. So I congratulate them on what they have been able to achieve thus far. And finally, Mr Speaker, I welcome that there is an aspiration in this deal to resolve uh, pay parity. Thus far, though, the unions still have not been made an offer and there is no cast iron commitment as to how precisely the pay dispute will actually be resolved and whether pay parity will indeed be restored. And this must be a top priority for the executive formed here today. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And thank you, Jerry Carl. Can I call on Claire Sugden? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I just want to congratulate you and your deputies uh, for your appointments. I am, however, somewhat disappointed that there are no women within the Speaker's office. But um, we do, however, make up for that within the Executive Office, and I do want to wish my sincere congratulations to the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister. Um, I worked with both women uh, in government, uh, gosh, over three years ago now, and I can say and put on record that both women are incredibly capable and can do wonderful things for Northern Ireland if there is will. And I hope today is a demonstration of that will because uh, we need to take Northern Ireland forward. It has got to the point now where we, where, where we can't continue in this vein. I also want to congratulate the ministers who will be appointed here this afternoon. I do believe there is a wasted opportunity that none has decided to go into opposition. Don't fear opposition. Opposition improves legislation. 
If policy cannot up, uh, uphold the challenge that other members provide to it, then it's not good policy, and no one benefits from that. I do, however, appreciate that the stability of Northern Ireland does require that we have a five-party executive, and I, as an independent of, uh, member of this Northern Ireland Assembly, will support that executive in the work that we do, because critically moving forward, that work needs to happen. We've had, gosh, nearly 20 years of political party uh, nonsense, I would describe it as. Um, and I think now, moving forward, the focus of this assembly needs to be on good governance. Good governance that looks at the needs of the people outside of this chamber. And maybe for once, we put those people first instead of the political parties that sit within this room. Today is a fantastic day for Northern Ireland. The people of Northern Ireland are ecstatic that we, we, we are able here today and represent the, them on their behalf. And I think that's important to note that each one of us and the mandates that we all have represent the people of Northern Ireland. And it's them we disrespect when we disrespect each other within this chamber. I can't imagine that the problems that have existed of the past three years are going to be fixed overnight. And I think it's important that we as a chamber set an expectation that we are not going to fix the problems overnight. If anything, we, we need a root and branch review of every department in Northern Ireland. But it's good that the wheels are now moving, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Many thank you. Uh, Claire Sugden. Um, there are no further members indicating uh, to speak. So I'll move on to members. Just to enable myself to uh, chair the remaining business, I propose with your leave a short period of suspension to allow me to be properly briefed. The Assembly is by leave suspended until 3 p.m. Okay. Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary. Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary. Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary. Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary, program signed. 
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. 
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. 
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme Signed. 
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. 
This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Program Signed. This is the
Speaker of the Northern Ireland Assembly. Would you like to take the opportunity to apologise for and withdraw your statement of 2018 when you referred to Northern Ireland as that putrid little statelet? Thank you. So, okay. Just to start in the session, I just want to advise the House that I have received correspondence from the First Minister and Deputy First Minister in relation to the appointment of junior ministers. And I will ask the clerk to read the letter. Dear Speaker, we write to inform you of our intention to appoint both junior ministers in the Executive Office today. Those Assembly members being nominated are Gordon Lyons, Declan Kearney, <coughs> Yours sincerely, Arlene Foster, MLA First Minister, Michelle O'Neill, MLA Deputy First Minister. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, will Gordon Lands affirm the terms of Pledge of Office? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I confirm that I am willing to take up the office of Junior Minister and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4, uh, Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. And, uh, Gordon Lyons is now a junior minister. Congratulations. Uh, will Declan Kearney affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? schedule, then Act Speaker, I can confirm that I am willing to take up the office of Minister in the office of First and Deputy First Ministers, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 as to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Uh, Daglan Kearney is now a junior minister, Kogarjus Daglan, and, and uh, that concludes the business of appointing the junior ministers. Mr. Speaker, um let me make this final point. I mean, that, well, I could offer my congratulations to both of the junior ministers for taking up their office. Naomi. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm not sure if other members of the chamber are having the same difficulty that I'm having actually hearing you, Mr. Speaker. But there seems to be a problem with your mic, and it's incredibly difficult um, for us to be able to hear what you're saying. So, um, in order to be helpful, we would like to be able to hear you better. Sir, the endeavour to make sure that is, uh, doesn't go where in the future. But I'm told the mics are not working very well, and but not to get a bit of volume, so I'll do my best. And apologies for that. As, as long as we don't have to go back to the start again, now, we're, we're okay. Okay. So that that concludes the business of appointing the junior ministers. And as I said, congratulations to both. So where are we at now? So the next item of business is the filling of the office of the Minister of Justice. I will conduct a process for filling the office in accordance with the procedure set out in Part 1A of Schedule 4A to the Northern Ireland Act 1998 and Standing Order 44A. I will begin by asking for nominations. Any member may rise and nominate another member of the Assembly to hold the office of, Justice, of Minister of Justice. If members rise from more than one party, I will call first a member from the largest of those parties to make a nomination in accordance with Convention. I advise members that the Act requires that one nomination must be processed before a further nomination can be made. I will therefore only take one nomination at a time and put the question on that nomination. If the Assembly resolves by parallel consent that the member nominated shall be Minister of Justice and that person takes up office as required by the Act and standing orders, no further nomination may be made. I will only call for further nominations if those conditions are not fulfilled. Having consulted with party whips, I will allow a member making a nomination to speak for up to three minutes, following which there will be an opportunity for debate on the nomination, with members also having an opportunity to speak for three minutes. The standing orders place a time constraint on the nomination process, and I will curtail the debate if necessary, unless standing orders 44A2, the Assembly approves a request for the time limit to be extended. In any event, if it appears that before I put the question, the time limit will be exceeded, I will ask the nominator to repeat the nomination after the debate. As the, first, as the person nominated to fill the vacancy shall not take up office until he or she has affirmed the terms of the Pledge of Office contained in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998, after the question has been determined, I will ask the person nominated to affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office, which was read into the record during the previous item of business. 
Do I have any nominations for a member to hold the office of Minister of Justice? I, I nominate my party leader, Naomi Long, for the position of Justice Minister. And the member who wants to speak for you have up to three minutes. It's not compulsory. Thank you. <laughs> I will try, Mr. Speaker, not to speak too long. Um, Mr. Speaker and Assembly members, I have been privileged to work with Naomi Long for some considerable time in the Alliance Party. Over the years, I have gotten to know Naomi as the person and the politician. I am therefore confident in nominating her for this role. She will make an effective Justice Minister and bring a considerable wealth of experience and strength to this executive. As part of the new, new decade, new approach agreement, there, have been opportunity, there are many opportunities to be delivered and challenges to be resolved. Having an inclusive five-party executive will provide a collective commitment to deliver much-needed leadership and productive government. Naomi is committed to serving everyone without fear or favour and irrespective of religion, class, colour, nationality, gender, sexual orientation or disability. Naomi is committed to making politics work in Northern Ireland for all of our people and will work constructively, as she has said earlier, with all our partners in government and across this Assembly to ensure fair and transparent service will be delivered for everyone. For these and many other reasons, I, all of my wider Alliance Party colleagues, my colleagues here in the Chamber and one who is not here, Stuart Dixon, who unfortunately is recovering from major surgery in his fight against cancer who can't be here today. We all believe that Naomi Long is the right person to take on a responsibility for such a sensitive and trusted issue as policing and justice, and that she can be trusted to act in the best interests of the whole community. I ask this Assembly to support an inclusive executive and to give their support to Naomi Long for voting her, or by voting for her to be our Justice Minister. So I'm pleased to nominate Naomi Long for the post. Okay, so thank you. So Naomi Long has been uh, nominated. Uh, can I ask Naomi Long, do you accept the nomination? Yes, Mr Speaker, I accept the nomination, and I thank Kelly for her words. Okay, thank you, Naomi Long. Uh, the nomination will now be open for debate, and I would, would remind members that they may speak for up to three minutes. Uh, can I first call Paul Gibbon? I uh, wish you well in your role as Speaker. Uh, you are one of a, a select few, having served from 1998. Uh, and I have no doubt that that institutional memory and relationships will stand you in good stead as you seek to navigate this Assembly through what I am sure, as any debating uh, chamber should be, at times passionate debates. Uh, and so I wish you well uh, in the role that you now have and that of the Deputy Speakers. Uh, can I uh, commend uh, Claire Sugden, uh, first of all, for the role that she carried out uh, during her time as Justice Minister? Uh, she operated uh, in the executive in a very dignified manner. I had the privilege of serving with her during that period. Uh, a very tena uh, tenacious uh, Justice Minister, she achieved a number of significant things uh, during that tenure uh, and carried herself very well during that period of time. And I uh, want to put that on the record, uh, our appreciation of the service that you gave uh, at that time. Um, uh, Mr Speaker, we will be uh, supporting uh, the nomination of uh, Naomi Long to be the uh, Minister for Justice. Uh, the society faces a very wide range number of issues when it comes to uh, these matters, uh, but there is a way forward uh, by working together to address a lot of these areas. The document that has been agreed uh, recognises the need for additional resources for police officers. Uh, and when we look at the wide spectrum of issues within the criminal justice uh, sector, uh, uh, the Minister will have a lot of challenges, but she goes into an executive uh, where that executive will now be seeking to operate with collective responsibility. Uh, and I trust that uh, the Minister for Justice uh, will have the support of the wider executive as she will take up uh, her role in providing support to her colleagues in the spirit of that collective responsibility. Okay, thank you, Paul Gibbon. I'd like to call on Conor Murphy. Uh, can I say we will also be uh, supporting Naomi Long for this position? The procedure that we're uh, adopting today was devised as part of an agreement, uh, I think back in 2008, when we agreed to transfer our powers in policing and justice from London to here. Uh, it was considered at that time necessary because it was, uh, it was such a sensitive uh, and you know, perhaps 
uh, potentially controversial post and uh, department. Uh, I think that it is long since past time that we uh, uh, have we're now moved beyond that, where we don't require a special procedure uh, in which to elect this post. Uh, I think the performance of various ministers for justice in that position have helped that over the years, and I would like to pay tribute also to Claire Sugden, who was the last outgoing minister for justice, that we have proved over the passage of time that this no longer needs this type of procedure, and that the, the uh, allocation of the Department of Justice should form uh, the, uh, alongside the normal run of to hunt for all of the other departments. The, that would require legislation. My understanding would require legislation in Westminster, and so it is not possible to do it at this time. But it is my firm belief, uh, I am certain, and we are certain, that this will be the last time that we are allocating this position under such a procedure that we will move in the next mandate uh, to allocate the Minister for Justice, the Department for Justice, under the normal run of to hunt. Nonetheless, we are pleased to support Naomi Long, and we wish her well uh, in her endeavours over the next couple of years. Uh, thank you, Conor Murphy. So, call on Nicola Mallon. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I stand on behalf of the SDLP to commend Claire Sugden and to warmly congratulate um, Naomi Long. Uh, throughout uh, the talks process, uh, we and our parties, uh, alongside the Ulster Unionists, have worked hard and worked well together. Uh, and I look forward to continuing that cooperation, as with all parties, in the interests of everyone living in Northern Ireland. Uh, but, Mr Speaker, I must make the point, uh, as we have on previous occasions, um, that the Justice Ministry should be run uh, under De Hunt, and this must be the last time that it is not. Alan can now call on Jim Allister. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Allister, for that uh, very magnanimous gesture to the rest of the members. Okay, so. Okay, so. That. Uh, that, that, that concludes the debate. And, uh, before we proceed to the question, it would remind the Assembly that the Northern Ireland Act, that's for Jim, that's, that's my magnanimity towards yourself. The Northern Ireland Act 1998 requires that the resolution must be passed by parallel consent. The question is that Naomi Long be Minister of Justice. All those in favour? Aye. Contrary? As there are eyes from all sides of the Assembly and there are no dissenting voices, I am satisfied the parallel consent has been demonstrated. Members, I will now ask Naomi Long to affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 in the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Naomi Long. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, you have chaired meetings at which I have been present before, and I know that you won't indulge me much, but I would like to place on record. Um, that I am honoured to have the support um, of all sides of the House um, for the role which I am about to take up. I am also honoured to be following to build on the considerable legacy of David Ford and also the legacy of Claire Sugden. And I want to pay tribute to her. Whilst it was a short time in office, it was nevertheless a significant time. And so I am happy to affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Thank you, Naomi Long. And I confirm that Naomi Long, having affirmed the terms of the Pledge of Office, has taken up office as Minister of Justice in accordance with the Northern Ireland Act 1998. And I offer Naomi my congratulations. And we will now move on to the next uh, item. That is the appointment of Ministers. And the next item of business is the appointment of Ministers. And I will conduct a process for filling these offices in accordance with the procedure set out in Section 18 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998 and Standing Order 44. I will ask a nominating officer of each political party in the order required by the formula contained in Section 18.5 to select an available ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it who is a member of his or her party and of the Assembly. If a nominating officer declines to nominate, I will invite the nominating officer of the next political party determined by the formula to nominate a member to hold ministerial office. I would therefore call on Arlene Foster as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select the ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it who is a member of his or her party and of the assembly. Thank you very much Mr Speaker. I choose the Department for the Economy 
and I nominate Diane Dodds, MLA. Will Diane Dodds affirm or confirm that uh, she is willing to uh, take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I confirm that I am willing uh, to take up the, of, uh, the office of Minister for the Economy, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Thank you. The member Diane Dodds is now the Minister for the Economy. I will call on. Call on uh, Michelle O'Neill. Gormir, can, Corlea, can I nominate Conor oh, Murphy yes. to the post of Minister for Finance? Will Conor Murphy confirm that he is willing to take up the office and conf- affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Can Corlea, Tommy Tilchinak, Black Lash and Roll Shaw. I confirm I am willing to take up the office of the Minister for Finance. And I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Conor Murphy is now the Minister for Finance. I'll call on, I call on Arlene Foster as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in Section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his or her party and of the Assembly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I choose the Department of Education. And I nominate Peter Weir, MLA. Peter Weir confirm that he is willing to take up the office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office. Mr. Speaker, I confirm that I am willing to take up the office of Minister of Education, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 uh, to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Peter Weir is now the Minister for Education. I call on Michelle O'Neill as nominating officer of the political party of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select the ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his or her party of the assembly. Can I confirm that we wish to take the Department of Communities and can I nominate Dirty Hargy MLA as the minister? Dirty Hargy is now Minister for the Department for the. Will Dirty Hargy confirm that uh, she is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Yeah. I confirm that I am willing to take up the office of Minister for the Department of Communities and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of the Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. The member, Derry Hargy, is now Minister for the Department for Communities. I call on Kelly as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his or her party of the Assembly. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the SDLP, it is my particular pleasure to nominate our party's deputy leader, uh, Nicola Nicola Mallon as, uh, for the Department of Infrastructure. Will the member Nicola Mallon confirm that she is willing to take up the office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I confirm that I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Infrastructure and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. And I sincerely thank my party for the nomination. Mallon is now the Minister for the Department for Infrastructure. <coughs> call on Steve Aiken as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of his party and of the Assembly. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you, Speaker. I will be nominating Robin Swan MLA as the new Minister of Health for Northern Ireland. Will the member Robin Swan confirm that he is willing to take up? Speaker, I confirm that I am willing to take up 
the Office of Minister of Health, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in the Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Member Robbins Wan is now the Minister for the Department for Health. Okay. I, I call on Arlene Foster as nominating officer of the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a member to hold it who is a member of her party and of the Assembly. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, what is left and what we are very happy to take is the Department for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs and I nominate Edwin Poots, MLA. The member, Edwin Poots, confirmed that he is willing to take up the office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office. I confirm that I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. The member, Edwin Poots, is now the Minister for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Development. Is that the correct title? I want, first of all, to uh, thank the Assembly for the, uh, your patience. And that uh, concludes the appointment of ministers under the Dehan process. And I offer my congratulations to all of those who have taken up office. I'd like to pause. The next item of business on the order paper on this fine Saturday afternoon is the adjournment. So, however, before putting the question to adjourn, the sitting members of the Business Committee will meet after the sitting to consider an order paper for the next sitting. If the Business Committee agrees, an order paper will issue and be available electronically in the Business Office. And, uh, the question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. <laughs>